Zach Pack, he's always there for you. Zach Pack, only on YouTube. Zach Pack, what will he do next? Zach Pack, let's find out, cause it's all with the show. My love for the Mario Party series is pretty well documented at this point. It is one of my favorite multiplayer franchises of all time. So today, I decided to invite some friends over so that we can play some Mario Party together. This series is all about getting your friends together and playing on these amazing big boards and buying up stars for about 20 coins each, competing in mini games, and seeing who is the ultimate superstar. This is one of Nintendo's flagship multiplayer franchises, up there with Mario Kart and Super Smash Bros. It's a series of games that tests, trusts, breaks friendships, and is not for the faint of heart. Ah, <sighs> well, all I gotta do is sit here, wait for my friends to show up, and then we're gonna play some Mario Party. <sighs> well, um... They're not here. And, uh, I don't think they're going to come at all. That's so sad. I thought they were my friends. Ugh. This really sucks. I was so excited for this party for months because I was going to get to play Mario Party with my friends. It really goes to show. I've got no friends. I've got... Did you say you have no friends? Huh? If you have no friends, then this is the perfect game for you! Mario Party Advance, the game for loners! Experience dozens of mini-games, board gameplay, and save Shroom City all by your little lonesome! Buy Mario Party Advance today and you will not regret it. Not like you're doing anything else anyways. Well, I don't know how sad this makes me, but uh... Well, I've already got the game and I am very familiar with it. Mario Party Advance came out in early 2005 for the Game Boy Advance and it is the first Mario Party game to change up the core formula that the previous Mario Party games had used. It is also the only Mario Party where the board gameplay is completely single player, with multiplayer features being relegated to a handful of dual mini games that this game has. Mario Party Advance has been notoriously labeled as the worst Mario Party game of the bunch, and some people even go as far as to call it the worst Mario game to ever be released. Now that's a bold statement. There are some pretty bad Mario games out there, like Mario's Pinball Land and Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, but for some reason, this game has been labeled the worst Mario game of all time on sites like Metacritic. So, let's whip out our Game Boy Advances, Give it a play and see what is so bad about it. We start up the game and the first thing you have to do is create a passport. You put in your name, birth month, hobbies, all that jazz. Apparently you can give your passport to other people and vice versa and gain a collection of passports, but I never did this. Anyways, after you put all that in, this little star dude comes out and asks you some more questions like, what is my biggest dream? Hmm, biggest dream. Probably being rich. I mean, can you blame me? Now it's asking me, what is my silliest secret? Okay, I'm gonna type this in. No looking, please. Hey! I said no looking! It was private. 
Anyways, you then join Toad as he welcomes you to the party world right before Bowser comes in and ruins everything. There are these gadgets that you can play that are each unique and cute, but Bowser sends them all across Shroom City and it is your job to go and retrieve them. So, you choose between four playable characters, Mario, Luigi, Peach, or Yoshi, and then you hop in a car... OH MY GOD! Yup, a car. This Mario Party made the car mechanic hated even before Mario Party 9. Anyways, once you select your character, you load into Shroom City and begin your adventure. The objective here is to collect all the missing gadgets by completing 50 different quests throughout Shroom City. 50?! Yeah, because Bowser has a bunch of pipes that can only be opened after completing a certain number of quests. So to open them all, you need to do all 50 quests. To show how dedicated I am to reviewing this game, I'm going to be going through every single quest that this game has to offer with you guys, so we better get started. I do not want to be here all night. Since we are playing as Luigi, we are starting off in the seaside area, so the first quest in our path is at the library, where you have to solve some math problems with Mecha Koopa in a quest called Math Magician. Since this game is meant to be playable for people of all ages, the math problems are ridiculously easy, maybe at a second grade level. Next up is this dolphin comedy club in a quest called Comedy Bomb. Here, the dolphin is having trouble with his confidence, as he feels like he isn't funny enough to become a comedian, so he recruits you to laugh at his jokes. Sounds easy enough, but if you don't laugh enough, or laugh too much at the wrong times, he won't buy your laughter, so make sure to only laugh when he tells the punchline of the joke. Pretty fun quest if you ask me. The next quest is Swim and Wimp, and by this point I'm not really gonna say all of the quest names because that just takes up a lot more time. Anyways, here, like with the dolphin, Cheap Cheap is feeling down on his confidence in his swimming ability, so you must race him. However, the objective is not to win the race, but to lose the race by a small enough margin so that Cheap Cheap believes that he is actually good and that you didn't just let him win. Another pretty clever one, to be honest. After this, Bowser then opens up one of his pipes for one of his quests. We're gonna save all of Bowser's quests until the very end and knock them all out in one go. After every three turns, you compete in a minigame to earn mushrooms. Yeah, I forgot to mention this bit. You start out with five mushrooms, and each turn requires you to use a mushroom. If you run out of mushrooms, then it's game over. The minigames in this game are honestly quite good. There's nothing absolutely astounding, but I'll talk a little bit more about the minigames later. Moving on, the next quest we are doing is in the Duel Tower. Here, you have to climb up this tower floor by floor and duel the opponents. I'll talk about the dual minigames more later with the other minigames, but this section is quite fun. Each floor counts as a singular quest, so by the end of this, you knock out three quests. Next up is a quest called Sploosh. Here, you have to solve a mystery. Someone got pulled into the water. Shroomlock? From Toadlin Yard? <laughs> okay, that one's pretty clever. In Shroomlock's quests, you have to listen to what each suspect is saying and use the highlighted clues to figure out who the culprit is. I wish it required a little more thinking, as the solutions are usually glaringly obvious, but it's still a cute idea. Plus, Shroomlock is one of the more unique characters in this game, and I always like it when Nintendo lets Mario games get a little more creative with its character designs. Anyways, we head to the Mushroom Beacon next for another dual minigame. Self-explanatory. The last mission in the seaside area is this one with Lakitu, where he is a really big fan of a show called Toad Force 5, but there is a line that he just can't remember. So you have to go to someone else who will tell you what that infamous line is, and then you go back to him to tell it to him, and then he remembers and gives you a gadget. Next up, we start working our way into town and meet up with Goomba for the Kind Goomba quest. Here is the first of many fetch quests. We have to go next door to the train station to get Goomba a train ticket. While this quest isn't too bad, there are more fetch quest missions coming up that are way more of a nuisance because it requires you to travel across the map in some cases to get the items you need. Like the next quest for Shy Guy at said train station. He needs coal to run the trains and he's all out. The only place you can get coal are from the vending machines across town, so you gotta go and get him coal from there. 
Admittingly, the joke about the machines having coal instead of cola actually got a chuckle out of me. <laughs> coal machines instead of cola. Fetch quests are a very common type of quest in the town area. The next quest, find the password, is the very same. Here, you have to get this bob -omb and action figure from the item shop so that Paratroopa can give you the password to relay back to the bob -omb. Once you do that, bob -omb tells you that we should try and find his boss, and that he is hiding in a basement somewhere. Interesting. Next up in town, we go to the condo, where there is a suspicious blank space under the first floor, potentially where a basement would be. Aha! I'm a genius! Here, you have to beat King Babam in a dice rolling contest. Complete luck! Have fun! Moving up to the rooftop, we have to summon a UFO by playing a game of Shy Guy Says. Except, it's 10 times more forgiving. We just gotta match Fly Guy well enough to summon the UFO and make Mr. E happy. Yes, this toad's name is Mr. E. Moving down to the third floor, we have Flutter. Flutter has fallen in love, but fears rejection. Flutter drops hints that she likes Mr. I and wants us to tell him about her love for him. So, we work our way over to him and... Oof. The feelings were not mutual, and when you tell Flutter this, they kick you out, wanting to be left alone. Oh my god, that's awful. Man, that one really hits close to home. This game just got real. Anyways, now we head to the second floor where we meet up with a bunch of toadies rehearsing their band performance. Problem being, they have no venue to perform at. We gotta do another fetch quest and head over to the Mushroom Stadium and get them a gig there. What's weird is that they seem to be a hip-hop group of some sort, given the way that their dialogue all rhymes. Tell me, when you think of toadies, does your mind immediately go to hip-hop group? Mine sure doesn't. Next up is Chain Chomp, and all you gotta do is beat another duel minigame. Very easy stuff. Next, we head over to Thwomp's house for another Shroomlock mystery. Here, Thwomp says that he had been robbed when he went out and he lost 40 coins. After doing some digging, we figure out that it was impossible for Thwomp to leave his apartment because of the fact that his door was too small, which he then confesses is why he really called us. Since he couldn't leave his house, he was stuck there with no contact from the outside world and was feeling really lonely and had no friends. Okay, I feel like this game is personally attacking me. A flop with no friends, a flutter that's heartbroken, the amount of emotions that this game is pulling out of me, it's astounding. Goombob Manor is up next where we have to do yet another fetch quest. Here, Goombob wants to present a pretty seashell for his crush Goombetty, and we have to go all the way back to the seaside area to get it for him. Luckily for him, unlike Flutter, this works and he's got himself a date. That lucky son of a Babamba is next, and here you have to go into the desert region to grab him a flower. So yes, another fetch quest mission. You know, I wouldn't mind these fetch quest missions if there weren't so many of them. Because don't forget, each one requires you to use more dice to go across the map to get that object you need and get back. It just can be a tedious task and waste all your mushrooms. Especially since you cannot accept other tasks while completing the current one you have, meaning that any new quests you may come across on your way to get the item you need must be ignored. Anyways, after that quest, we'll make our way over to... Oh, this little shit. Koopa Kid will absolutely ruin your day. He randomly pops up and makes certain events happen, like warping me across the map. No, don't! <laughs> The jungle area? I don't want to be here! Well, while I'm here, I might as well get some of these quests completed. Next up, we visit Petal Guy, who is madly in love with someone, but is very vague on who. He only describes her as a fragile butterfly. Butterfly? But that's Flutter. But Flutter's in love with Mr. I. Oh, this is not going to go well, is it? Well, Petal Guy wants us to relay the news to Flutter, but when we arrive, we see the rejection happen right in front of us, and boy oh boy, it's brutal. He confesses his love to her through a little poem he wrote, asks her if she understands how he feels, and then she just bolts on out of there as quickly as possible. 
Yeesh, that might have been a little bit of a harsh rejection, methinks. Pedal Guy doesn't seem too bothered by this, though, as he still thinks he can win her heart. You go, little dude. Anyways, now, since we came back to the town from that last quest, we continue where we left off before and head to the Koopa Bank for another Shroomlock quest. Here, there was a bank robbery, and there were three suspects. Another basic deduction quest based on what each suspect says. Not difficult at all. However, you do have to leave the bank and go to all three suspects' locations on the map to get their statements, which is just a bit tedious. Anyways, now we are moving on to... Oh, you gotta be kidding me! We're getting warped again, this time to the desert. Well, might as well get some of the desert quests out of the way. Let's start off at Mushroom Field. Here, we have to beat a hammer bro at a hammer swing competition. To do this, we gotta mash A and B at the same time to spin the hammer. It's simple to do. You gotta kinda do the same thing for the next quest with Bullet Bill at Mushroom Stadium. You gotta race him to the end of the track by mashing the A button. Again, not too complicated. Then we go to the pyramids. After swinging a hammer to get us over there, we are met by Kamek who proposes a gambling challenge. It's a basic matching game, but pretty crazy how Nintendo won't even touch gambling contests with a 10-foot pole nowadays. Anyways, the objective of these gambling games is to win one more coin than you had originally started out with, win the game, and the quest is complete. Next, we head over to Pokey. He has some riddles for us to solve. Well, they're less so riddles and more like easy trivia. Fun fact, I think this is the only time in a Mario Party game where Mario Golf and Mario Kart are referenced. Next and last quest in the desert is Klepto. He has a treasure chest that Mr. E wants to get into, but we have to guess the code. Thankfully, he makes it very easy for us to guess the code, as it's his favorite word and number. Very simple quest. Now, we head to the spooky area where we're going to say hello to the booze. This is another Shroomlock quest, where one of the booze is an imposter, and we have to look at their movements to figure out which one is the fake. Basically, a remake of Ghost Guess from Mario Party 1, except it's 10 times easier. Now, we're heading to... Oh, god damn it! not again! Well, don't you dare. Don't you dare! Now we gotta work our way all the way back to the spooky area wow. again. Oh no, there's absolutely no way! Oh. Okay. I'll take that. Yeah, the other thing that Koopa King can do if you bump into him is make you play a game of rock, paper, scissors, and if you lose, he takes one of your mushrooms. Oh, you little... Ugh. You know what? It's okay. We got a lot of mushrooms stocked up. Losing one isn't gonna hurt us. Next up, we're visiting Mr. I, and he wants to see Princess Peach. Oh, you ass, but I'm playing as Luigi. Now I gotta switch characters. All right, so now I'm Peach. Wait a minute, where'd all my mushrooms go? That's right, whenever you quit the game to switch to another character, all the mushrooms you have stocked up are completely gone and you have to start over from scratch. Well, that sucks. Back on track, we visit Mr. I where he confesses his love for Princess Peach. Now we know who he was interested in. And that's the quest. Easy enough. Next up, we have the Haunted Condo, where we have three floors of quests for us to complete. On the second floor, this Sniffit wants us to find some ghosts to haunt his floor. Easy enough. We just gotta ask the boos that we saw earlier if they would be willing to haunt it, which they are. Then, the first floor is Ninji, and he wants a special edition DVD of Toad Force 5, which is at Mushroom Condo's first floor, which we didn't go into earlier. So, another fetch quest. One funny detail is that this Toad has 50 of these DVDs stocked up, then Ninji tells us that there were only 50 ever made. I do really love the subtle humor in this game, the writing is top tier. Next up in the basement is Lantern Guy, and we gotta do another fetch quest. This time, to get a Toad Force 5 figure to prove our love for the series, which we gotta go to the item shop to get. I should mention that Toad Force 5 is a fictional TV show that gets mentioned quite a few times in this game. It actually seems pretty cool. Once that's done, the Haunted Condo is complete. This also completes the Spooky area, and we move on to the Snowy area. First up, we visit this penguin for another gambling game, a pachinko machine. This one is self-explanatory. 
I also realized that I forgot to go to the gambling quest in the town area. There are two of them total there. So let's go do those now. The first one is slots. Again, self-explanatory. The other one is a kind of matching game. You scratch off five cards, hoping for a pair of three or more of any symbol. All three of these games are completely luck-based, so they can be a real pain in the ass. Now we work our way back. Mother Next up is Mr. Blizzard. With him, you gotta hit a home run. Like Dinger Derby, but more simple. Not too bad. This was the last one in the snow area. Yeah, there were only two quests here, not counting Bowser's one that we'll tackle later. Now we go to the jungle area where we first stop at Ukiki's place. Ukiki has gone missing and we need to find him near a lake, which we then go to to find him. Very simple. Staying at the lake, we now meet Dory, who is feeling lonely because everyone is scared of him and he only wants a friend. But that friend must be a dinosaur. Oh god damn it, now we gotta switch to Yoshi. Switch to Yoshi, work your way back to the jungle, and now we can become friends with Dory and complete the quest. Next up, we visit Hoot, and we compete in another gambling minigame. This time, it's a roulette. Again, completely luck-based. It's best to spread your coin bets around so that, no matter which icon you hit, you gain coins. Then, you meet up with Hulu and do some dancing. This is another Shy Guy Says kind of minigame, but I like this one more than the UFO summoning one because it actually does get pretty quick and you really do need quite the reaction time here. Alright, now we have finally opened up all the warp pipes, but there is one more quest out here I need to do, so I'm gonna come here and damn it we need someone with a mustache. <sighs> Alright, well, I guess since I've already played Luigi, we're gonna end this thing off as Mario. Well, when we get to here, we have to do a duel. Win the duel and you win the quest. Before we start facing up against Bowser, I guess I'll take the opportunity to talk about the mini games you play throughout this game. I won't talk about all of them, but there aren't too many mini games anyways. Since this game is mostly single player, most of these mini games are solo mini games, where the objective is to just beat the mini game itself as opposed to other players. There are some really solid ones, like this one where you have to sort books by colors on this giant bookshelf. While the time limit may be a bit too long, it's still a really fun one. There's also this one that's basically sneak and snore, except much better. Here, you sneak to the end of the level in a barrel, all while avoiding the sleeping chain chomps. And there's also this one where you have to use an elevator to get each character to their designated floor. Oh, and I think this minigame is my favorite. Here, you have to avoid the amp's electrical charges by moving out of the way in time. All these minigames are solid, but not every single one is a home run. There's one minigame where you have to boat around and rescue a bunch of Ukikis from drowning, but the controls aren't the most responsive. Or this minigame where you have to catch a big enough cheap cheap to beat the record, and this one's kinda just boring. It's basically like any standard Mario Party game. It's got its good mini games and it's got its bad mini games, but all of that is behind us now. Now we have to devote all of our attention to absolutely devouring Bowser and Koopa Kid. Starting off, we gotta beat Bowser in a game of soccer. This one seems tricky at first, but you just gotta always shoot straight. That's it, nothing more. Then compete in a Koopa Kid mini game. In these minigames, the objective is to defeat the Koopa Kids, which the amount is chosen at random by a dice block before the minigame. But they're not hard at all, they're all typically pretty dang easy. Next up, Bowser is in the freezing cold. Since laughing will warm him up, we need to help him warm up by giving him some good quality jokes. So, we gotta complete the punchlines to the jokes that he sets up for us. Pretty simple, and then we gotta do another Koopa Kid minigame, then we complete the quest. Next up, Bowser wants a gift and gives us a riddle to solve to figure out what we should get him. Reading through the riddle, it's clear that he wants a ring. So, we have to go all the way to the item shop to grab him one, and then of course another Koopa Kid minigame. Unfortunately, after beating this Koopa Kid minigame, I was all out of mushrooms and so close to the end, got my first game over. Once we get back to the pipes, we then go to Bowser's toy store. Here, he basically quizzes us on our knowledge of Toad Force 5. Glad I paid attention because I was able to complete the quiz and rather than a Koopa Kid minigame, we actually compete in a dual minigame. Dual minigames are the only minigames in Mario Party Advance that you can play with more than one player because of the fact that it's a one-on-one -on -one minigame. Once we slam that hammer down on Yoshi, poor fella, we complete that quest and move on. 
Next up, we go to Bowser's Mansion, and honestly, this quest really threw me for a loop. Here, we gotta solve another mystery with Shroomlock. A painting has been stolen, and Shroomlock believes that Bowser stole it. So, you have to comb through Bowser's story to find the answer. You can ask him about his alibi, his knowledge of the painting, or where in the house he could have hid it. His alibi is that he was with Koopa Kid at home and that Koopa Kid can vouch for him. There's not much you can do with that information, so looking at the other two inquiries, if you ask him about the painting, he says that he's never seen it before. But then you ask him about his house and he says he'd never be able to fit that painting inside the house. So I assumed the bit where he said he'd never seen the painting before was a lie, so that's what I selected, but I was wrong. Huh? So now I gotta go back in, go through all the dialogue again, and choose the other option, to which Shroomlock agrees and confronts Bowser, saying if he had never seen the painting, how would he have known it wouldn't fit in the house? But that's why I chose that option! He lied about not seeing it! No, oh, forget it. Anyways, Bowser confesses, then you gotta play another Koopa Kid minigame. Simple, easy, moving on. Next up, Bowser has a gambling minigame of his own for us to beat. It's basically the shell game, and an easy one at that. And there's actually no Koopa Kid minigame for this quest, so we'll just move right along. Next up, we gotta play a card game with Bowser. We gotta guess if the next card is higher or lower than the one before. Pretty self-explanatory. And then, of course, another really easy Koopa Kid minigame. Then we have this really weird Bowser quest, where Bowser is making a monster, and it's this giant piranha plant that we have to duel, when in reality, we're just gonna duel Luigi and Shuffleboard. Very high stakes. No Koopa Kid minigame in this one either. Then once that's done, we finally unlock the final quest of the game, the finale. We head up to Bowser for one last Koopa Kid minigame. Oh, so it's just a Koopa Kid minigame? This is gonna be a piece of cake. <laughs> Oh lord. This Koopa Kid minigame is definitely the hardest of the bunch. It requires good timing and a lot of focus. But once you figure that out, it's honestly not too bad. Once you beat that minigame, Bowser just accepts his defeat. No pushback or anything. Just gives you the final gadget, being his handprint, and credits roll. Well, I say credits, but it's actually just a bunch of updates on how each of Shroom City's inhabitants has been doing since you helped them. Honestly, it's pretty cute. Oh yeah, we finally beat Bowser and got all of the gadgets back. Now, let's check out these gadgets, because this game's been hyping them up a lot, and Professor E. Gad is the one behind all of them, so they have to be good. That's it! Ugh, you've got to be kidding me! All of that hard work, completing all of those fetch quests, battling a roller coaster of emotions, and recovering from all of the Koopa Kid warps just to get all of these stupid gadgets like an egg rolling and a freaking falling stick! Okay, I've had it, and you've asked for it! Ha 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 